Hello and welcome to an extra special episode of Fully Charged. Now this was recorded earlier this year. Uh, it's a special report about uh, Ecotricity's new green gas mills and we thought it's so good and so interesting and relevant to Fully Charged, we put it out on Fully Charged as well. So sit back and enjoy the organic goodness. So I'm here today with uh, Ecotricity founder Dale Vince. The, there are really plausible and usable solutions for electricity generation, but heating, which is an enormous cost in terms of CO2 in, in this country, you know, that's a big challenge. So can you give us a brief idea of what, what the green gas yeah, plan definitely, is? <clears throat> definitely. Like you, uh, you know, I felt for many years that we just had to give gas up. We had the answer for green electricity, but gas we had to one day give up. And that was until about 2010 when we discovered that green gas existed or could be made and, and then could be scrubbed up and put in the grid. That's very recent, like about two years ago. And that led us to to this really. Um, uh, the basic process at the heart of this is anaerobic digestion, which has been around for a long time. Uh, and, and basically things break down with bacteria in the absence of oxygen. That's what anaerobic digestion right. is. Um, and so you can take organic matter and you can make gas from it. And uh, the new technology is something that can scrub that gas up and make it grid quality. So we can put that in the grid in the same way we do with our green electricity from, from a windmill. When we began to look at how we could make green gas in Britain, there, there are kind of two main ways to do it. One was to use energy crops, uh, you know, purpose-grown stuff. Um, and the other was to use food waste. Uh, and they both have their kind of problems. So we spent a couple of years looking at a different uh, approach. And we've come up with grass. What literally... What, what you catch when you mow your lawn, it's yeah, that stuff. Absolutely. Wow. Um, so uh, we, we've, uh, we've undertaken a study using DEFRA statistics for the, uh, the land in, in Britain, and there's enough marginal grassland for us to make all of the gas we need to heat all of the homes in Britain. So you're not talking necessarily like the grass verge on a motorway, you're talking about... Fields. The fields, yeah, right. Yeah. Grass verges and, and lawns and stuff, I mean, they're too small and uneconomic to harvest the grass from, but fields. And there's a lot of marginal land in Britain that's, uh, it's either having grass grown to feed animals, of course we don't want to be doing that, yeah. uh, to feed humans, or, or it's just not being used at all. One of the great, uh, there are many, but one of the great byproducts of this process is we create um, habitat for wildlife in the process of growing the grass. The land itself goes organic. And this is a project of about five megawatts. It would power about 5,000 homes per year with gas wow. and harness about interestingly 5,000 acres around it so it's about an acre per home to grow enough grass to make gas to power your home and that 5,000 acres goes organic becomes a wildlife haven all of the fertilizers we need for that 5,000 acres comes from this green gas uh, mill as a byproduct. Right because once it's so once you've got the effectively the gas out of the material the material is then sort of composted grass so the whole thing is a, it is a cycle in that it sense is. in that local area though. The key is to have the land around the around the right. project. And, and then it just becomes, it's just farming traffic, just right. moving grass down the road in tractors and trailers. Yeah. So this first project then is, is, is outside South, Southampton, is Sparshall College. You, are you working with the college on this yeah. project? Yeah, we've got a site uh, on their site and we just gained planning permission about two weeks ago, I think, which is quite fantastic. The idea is to um, use the project at the college to teach people um, how it works to kind of train the next generation or the new generation of green gas engineers and we're building a faculty alongside it with the college in order to train people in the arts of renewable energy including green gas but also wind and sun and that kind right. of stuff. So can you do a quick very brief discussion of how it works then so I mean the grass because oh, I'm just trying to work out from this model which I love the model but these these big bays here is that where it first arrives is that where you first yeah, that's right. In. That's right. This is where the grass arrives. These are the stills, and uh, these dark green things are covers. Um, you can see the cover is half pulled back here. So the grass is turned into silage, like uh, for cow feed, right. on a yeah. normal farm. Uh, and when it's ready, it goes into these uh, first set of domes here, uh, where it's processed, uh, starting with the little ones onto the big ones. And these three big domes here collect the gas. Wow. Uh, so it's as simple as that, from grass through these domes, and there's the gas, gets scrubbed up into an underground gas pipe. It, it, clearly, this is, this is doing one area in the south of England. I mean, but do, you, I, I, do you envisage a time when that, these could be rolled out across the country? Yeah, our plan shows that we need 5,000 of these to provide all of the gas for all of the homes in Britain. What is the gas that you produce? Is it, is it methane? Methane. It is methane, right. In, in many ways, this is like a, a, um, an industrial cow or a 21st century cow, if you think about it, because we feed it with grass, uh, the grass turns to methane, the only difference is we capture it all, none yeah. leaks at either end, no. uh, and we put it in the gas grid and use it. And we don't have the waste inefficiency of a cow's body 
to feed either. Yeah. So it's a, it's a kind of modern cow. And everything that comes out the back end of this goes back on the field a bit like right. a cow. In terms of cost per sort of cubic meter of gas that you produce, do you, is there, do you think it's going to be markedly more or roughly the same as, as... It's more expensive to start with, which is why we need support. But the um, <clears throat> current proposed level of support is fine. Right. Um, we just need grass to be allowed as a feedstock, um, as opposed to animal waste right. uh, or food waste, which um, you know, we think grass is much better. I wish you and Ecotricity well with it, because it does seem like a brilliant, brilliant idea. And it's such a great answer to that, because that's been a, a long-term question. You know, it's all right with your solar panels and your lights, what about the gas heating? You know, they, and I, this is an I, extraordinary I, solution to that. I agree. And, and, and at this point in time, it's also the perfect answer to fracking. You know, yeah. which seventy percent of the public are against. Yes, the government are intent on forcing over the heads of people, uh, really on the premise that we've got to get our gas from somewhere. Right. So this is the answer. We're saying. So we're also for it. local communities that are opposed to fracking, like if they could say to yeah. the local officials, "We don't want fracking. We want one of these." That's right. Then you're looking at. A, I mean, it's a very different argument. It's suddenly it's, it isn't not in my backyard. It's yeah, bring it in my backyard, but not that. That. Now, everyone's heard of Frackingdale, but I mean, can you give a rough rundown of what it actually is? I think a lot of people don't quite understand what it is. They know it involves drilling and stuff. Why I'm, I'm not an expert on the process, but it does involve drilling and pumping uh, you know, liquids underground and basically destroying the rocks in order to release some gas from it. And it comes with enormous environment risks to uh, polluting water and land and that kind of stuff. Um, to create some fossil fuel gas that we surely can't afford to burn if we're going to fight climate change successfully. And also the fracking sites themselves uh, really have a very short life, maybe five to seven years. So it's a very short term um, fix to a very long term problem, which is how we're going to heat our homes uh, and avoid climate change. Proponents of fracking do argue that it's got a lower carbon content than uh, other forms of gas, but it's actually not true. No, I mean, it might have slightly lower than coal, but then we really shouldn't be using coal at all. So, I mean, that doesn't, yes, that argument doesn't stand up for much. It seems to be an increasingly unpopular with the general public. I mean, the, it, it isn't, so, there aren't, I don't see people going around going, fracking is good, let's frack some more. I think you're right. I think uh, David Cameron and George Osborne used to, um, of course, they're not in their jobs anymore. The most recent survey by the government of public attitude showed that opposition to fracking uh, has reached an all-time high. It's in the 70 percent. Right. So it's the most unpopular form of uh, energy production probably known, uh, more unpopular than nuclear even. Um, so it's a, bit, uh, it's a bit of a mystery to me and uh, other people as to why the government is so hell-bent on forcing fracking on the country, yes. given all of this. Yes, there's obviously an enormous amount of money behind the companies that, have, that want to do the fracking because there's very, very good short-term, short, -term, short <laughs> blinkered returns on, on that investment. And is it the case that, uh, you know, if you had a, one of your green gas mills on a site that the, the, the local community refused to let the frackers do or somehow they managed to stop it and you could put a, a, a green gas mill, could it in, in effect produce the same amount of of energy. Yeah, definitely the same amount of energy without the environment risk and um, for much, much longer and pretty much on a carbon neutral basis. I hate the, the cliche term no brainer, but it's, it's fairly obvious to a lot of communities, I think, when they can see that there's an old, you know, they might, because it's the thing where I suddenly want to encourage nimbyism. When it comes to fracking, I want to go, go, you don't want this near your house. It's going to lower your property value. But if they can then say, well, look, we could do this and we could use the local yeah. waste. There's a lot of grass grows in this country. If there's nothing else, we grow a lot of grass. Yeah, and it's important, isn't it, to have a, a practical alternative. It's all very well being against things as an environmentalist. You know, that's kind of that's a, a situation I'm used to. But it's important to have an answer. And for electricity, we've got wind and, and solar. We've got emerging tidal and wave. You know, we can make all of the electricity our country needs from renewable energy. Uh, making gas from grass is a new frontier. Um, and this is something that local communities can, um, can lobby for, campaign for. At the moment, though, they're shut out of the planning process. Uh, they don't get a say. The county councils make the decision, but even when they turn down a uh, fracking site, government steps in and just approves it. Uh, our green gas mills enter the planning system at a lower level, at the district level, and give people a say. And so what we're hoping to do, we're, we're, we're actually going to follow the fracking industry uh, wherever they put in an application for a fracking mill, we're going to put one in for a green gas mill to try and stimulate this debate and say to local people, look, there is a choice, there's a different way to do it. Your voice isn't currently being heard, but let's have this conversation about how we want to make our gas in the future. What a lot of people don't know is they're actually supporting their industry with their energy bills. Yeah. Four of the big six energy companies in this country are involved in fracking financially. There'll be a lot of people in our country that are against fracking, but paying for it paying by for the back door. It. Yes. 
So you should check out who you get your, your energy from and not necessarily switch to ecotricity, no. switch to a green energy supply that doesn't support fracking. It's not that hard to find out which ones. Yeah. I'm with ecotricity, just saying. <laughs> so how can the, the, the general public get involved in, in, well, in effect, helping ecotricity fight fracking? Because that's, I think, probably a good way of approaching it. The biggest, easiest thing to do actually is to, in a way, kind of campaign from your, from your couch, uh, switch energy provider, join us, that would be great. Yeah, we can use people's gas bills to drive our green gas mill program um, and use that to um, cut fracking off at the pass in effect because ours is such a better alternative. We just need a bit of momentum to show that it works and um, we can defeat fracking that way. I, I like to think of it also as a, as a bit like the, um, the boycott of South Africa when people stopped buying uh, things from South Africa that had an impact on the country and on apartheid and stuff like that. We need to boycott fracking. Pe right. People need to boycott it with their energy bills. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. I'm really excited about green gas. Just the sort of person I am. Anyway, uh, do have a, a look at the subscription, have a look at the Patreon links, and obviously, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.